Good morning, everyone. Islam alaikum. I'm Professor Bansha Chun Chujit from Thammasat University, Thailand. Thank you, Iskas, for invitation. Today, I'm talking about the meniscus ramp and meniscus root repair technique. How important of meniscus? The meniscus is a sharp absorber of the knee by its tensile hoop stress function and maintained by meniscus root anchoring. After the meniscus extrusion, the contact area is decreased, then the peak contact pressure increases. Finally, the cartilage damage and also arthritis. From this biomechanical study, the consequence of medial meniscus root tear is equal to total meniscectomy. There are many surgical options such as meniscus repair, partial meniscectomy, or root reconstruction. Many studies show that repair give better outcome comparing to conservative treatment of partial meniscectomy. Let's consider three things before jumping to do the meniscus repair. Number one, the alignment. Number two, ligament injury. Number three, the condition of the cartilage. The goal of meniscus root repair is to prevent the arthritic change. Indication for surgery is acute injury within three months or chronic injury with good cartilage, KL less than two. Contraindication for surgery is subcondyl bone collapse or a vascular necrosis, substantial malalignment more than 5 degrees or BMI more than 30. So three things that we need to concern when we do the meniscus root repair. Number one, the techniques, suture anchor techniques or the trans pull pullout. How about the suture construct, simple suture, locking loop, simple cinch or modified medicine allen, and extrusion reduction or not in chronic case. This is the trans pull pullout technique. I prefer the double tunnel suture bridge or single tunnel mass and islands technique. This is my published technique, a medium meniscus root repair with the use of the tibial tunnel suturing technique. I use the meniscus uh, suture needle with mass and islands and tibial button. The advantages of trans tibial technique are anatomic reduction, large surface area into the bone socket, stable cortical fixation. But there are many disadvantages, so, uh, such as the bone tunnel required, list of tunnel conversions, list of neurovascular injury, bungee cord effect because the suture is long, and difficult to tension. The advantages of suture anchor is that you have no need for the postural medial portal pressment, have less list of control damage, and no tunnel convergence. But there's uh, some disadvantages like you need MCL release and the anchor can be loose if the patient has poor bone quality. This is a clinical study from Korea by Dr. Kim. They found that the outcome of both ways, pull out or suture anchor are good in terms of uh, gap reduce, decrease the extrusion and healing. But the mechanical study found that the suture anchor had better biomechanical properties. But anyway, both techniques not list the same strength of native meniscus root. Right now, there's still a lot of debates about the trans tibial pullout or anchor suture techniques. Okay, but now I prefer double fixation technique because you get the advantages of both trans tibial and also the anchor suture technique. A case example, this is 60 years old female. She has history of falling and pain on the medial joint line. So x-ray look normal. MRI show the meniscus uh, root tear. And also there's a ghost sign or the medial meniscus and crepe sign. So this patient, I did the meniscus root repair using the combination of trans tibial and also the suture anchor technique. I put my tunnel very central and more, me, uh, more anterior. Okay, I put the soft anchor into the bone and then using the mesen islands to fix the uh, meniscus and back up with tibia button. So these are the combination between suture anchor and trans tibial. You have double fixation. MI six months after surgery show the nice healing of the meniscus. The meniscus root tear is always associated with meniscus extrusion, about 80% prevalence. So should we reduce the extrusion or just root repair is enough? This study published in 2008, they demonstrate that if there is meniscus extrusion, it significantly changes the contact pressure and knee joint kinetics. So that's why only meniscus root repair may not enough. This is my published technique about the arthroscopic direct meniscus extrusion reduction. 
using the suture anchor. I put my suture anchor on the cartilage, okay, and then I use suture hook to reduce my extrusion, okay, and then tie the knot in the joint. So I do that before I do meniscus root repair. So when STO come to place, STO is another tool to improve the outcome because it can protect the repair meniscus and load the pathology compartment for pain relief. Indication for STO is chronic tear with malalignment, high BRI patients, and combined with also necrosis. The wireless malalignment is a poor prognostic factor, so always consider STO if that's more than three to five degree of malalignment. I prefer one leg standing view because the patient always protect the weight okay, on the injured side. This is more reliable. This study showed that STO versus STO with root repair, there's no difference. So that means STO is very effective, even you have no root repair. This is my published technique, the magic point release. So I always emphasize to my fellows, exposure is the key of success. So magic point release can increase the joint space, less arteriogenic cartilage damage during the surgery, and you can do good job if you have good exposure. So this patient, 40 years old lady, she has six months of knee injury, twisting, she has medial joint line pain, x-ray show little wireless deformity, about two degree wireless, but x-ray show extrusion of the meniscus more than four millimeters, and also mellow edema on the middle side. Will you repair the meniscus around? So just repair meniscus is not enough. Okay, this patient, I do the root repair together with STO. So I use Mesen Allen's for the meniscus and then I combine STO. I protect my suture okay, using the endobutton reamer, protect it all the time. Okay, and then I tie the suture to the STO plate. The patient is really happy. She has good outcome and good length of motion after the surgery. I show you some bad memory. She's the doctor. I did the root repair for her, no STO. She has good healing of meniscus root, okay, but there's more extrusion after the surgery. This is she. She's 53 years old. You see that I did the root repair for her six months ago. She has very nice healing of the meniscus, but there's still extrusion and molar edema on the medial side. The patient has persistent pain after the surgery. So I need to do the STO and centralization surgery for her. So I did centralization and also the STO for this patient. Okay. So the way I do, I put the suture anchor okay, and then I repair the extrusion reduction. Meniscus already healed six months after the surgery. Okay. And then I tie the suture outside the joint and that is the STO. Okay. So after surgery, the patient quite happy and her has no more joint life pain. Actually, there's another issue about the meniscus root reconstruction in chronic root tear, or also necrosis, how to manage, but have no time. You assign me another topic about the meniscus ram lesion. You should give me another five minutes. Thank you. Actually, meniscus ram lesion was described long time ago, since 1988 by Michael Strobel. It's uh, located mostly in the posterior medial part of the knee joint and it's always combined with ACL injury. And we always miss it if we didn't put our skull in the back of the joint. The prevalence of RAM lesion with ACL injury is around 16%. It's common in young male, revision ACL, or chronic injury with side-to-side -side difference more than six millimeters. So MI always miss the RAM lesion because it's low sensitivity, about 48%. So you always zoom in in MRI to look for anything or uh, irregular fluid signal at the meniscal capsular junction. Uh, if you see the bone bruise on the postural medial of the tibia, so thinking about the RAM lesion. This is another example of misinterpretation by radiologists. Okay, it's not easy to see the RAM lesion by MRI. How important is a RAM lesion? Unrepaired RAM lesion significantly increase tibial translation and also exorotation of the knee joint. So the unrecognized lamination and untreated can lead to bucket handle in the future. 
with the incidence of 21%. This is my published RAM repair techniques. I just used transeptal postural lateral portal using 30 degree scope, don't need the 70, this is simple, and all inside repair. So you have very good visualization and it's a very simple instrument. I use two postural media portal for working. So this is an example of the view from 30 degree post low lateral portal, 70 degree from the notch, and 30 degree scope from the notch. You see the best view to see the RAM lesion is 30 degree scope using the post low lateral transeptal portal. So I prefer to do that and you just use simple instrument. This study compared the fast fix repair or inside comparing the suture hook repair technique. They found that the outcome is no difference. So this example of the RAM region using the fast fix repair, but it's good in the central part of the RAM, right? I, anyway, I still prefer to use all suture technique. So the mesos RAM region can be healed spontaneously because it's located in the posterior part with good vascularity. This is another example showing the complete healing of the meniscus RAM lesion. So the hydrogenic cartilage damage is very common when you do the lamp repair, especially the posterior condyle. I prefer to use different curve, left and right, with two bite, 90 degree. You can have better bite and less cartilage damage. I prefer to do femoral tunnel first, followed by lamp repair, and then pass the graft at the end of the surgery. Thank you so much for inviting me today.